Astronomers believe they can measure our motion through the universe with great precision, from the cosmic microwave background to galaxy flows to the pull of the great attractor they've built a picture of how our cosmic neighbourhood drifts through space. But every time we think we've pinned it down, the results don't agree. Some motions are faster than expected, others point in completely different directions. And the sharpest contradiction yet has just come from a study of over a million quasars. Like the CMB, quasars show a dipole, a kind of universal offset in redshift that can be read as our motion through the universe. But the direction doesn't match. It's almost exactly 90 degrees away from the CMB dipole, and instead points straight down the centre of our own galaxy. That's not where we should be moving, at least not if the CMB is really telling the truth. This creates a dilemma, with no easy answer. If the CMB is right, then the quasar results must be dismissed as error. If the quasars are right, the CMB dipole isn't motion at all and the cosmic rest frame of the Lambda CDM collapses. And if both are right, then the universe itself isn't uniform, and we end up in what looks suspiciously like a privileged location. Whichever way you turn, something in cosmology doesn't add up. To see why the new quasar results are so troubling, we need to step back and look at the cosmic microwave background itself, and why its dipole is considered so important. The CMB is a faint glow of microwave radiation, filling the entire sky, about 2.7 Kelvin above absolute zero. What leaps out immediately in the raw data is a large-scale gradient. One side of the sky is slightly hotter, the other slightly cooler. Only a few millikelvins of difference, but vastly stronger than the microfluctuations. This gradient is interpreted as a Doppler effect. As we move through the photon bath, radiation in the direction of our motion is blue-shifted, and in the opposite direction it's red-shifted. The result is called the CMB dipole. And this is not a fragile inference. The dipole is a first-order feature of the data. It is visible in the raw sky maps before any sophisticated processing, and it has been consistently confirmed by multiple satellites. Foreground subtraction is only needed to clean away galactic dust and synchrotron emissions. The dipole itself remains robust and unambiguous. That's why cosmologists treat it as the anchor of the universe. It defines the so-called cosmic rest frame. Whenever galaxy redshifts are corrected for peculiar motions, or large-scale surveys are aligned in a common frame, the CMB dipole provides the reference. It isn't just a feature of the background, it's the baseline against which the motion of everything in the universe is measured. With the CMB dipole so firmly established as our cosmic reference frame, the natural question is whether other distant sources show the same effect. If the dipole really is our motion through the universe, then every population of faraway objects should reveal the same pattern. Quasars are an ideal test. These are some of the brightest, most distant sources we can observe. They are scattered across the sky in enormous numbers, and their redshifts are measured with precision. If there is a universal motion, quasars should show it. Until recently, surveys were too small to give a clear answer. However, with the release of the CREA catalogue containing over 1.3 million quasars from Gaia's data, astronomers finally had the scale needed to measure the effect. The result was unambiguous. Quasars do show a dipole. Their redshifts are systematically higher in one half of the sky and lower in the other. Exactly what you'd expect if we were moving. However, then comes the problem. The direction of this motion does not align with the CMB. Instead of pointing towards LEO, the quasar dipole points almost 90 degrees away, directly towards the centre of our own galaxy. And that inferred speed is not 370 km per second, but closer to 1700, more than four times larger than the motion derived from the CMB. And this isn't the first time cosmic motion has refused to line up. For decades, astronomers have wrestled with peculiar motion flows on very large scales. The Great Attractor was one of the earliest hints, a mysterious pull drawing entire clusters of galaxies towards a point in Centaurus, stronger than local gravity alone could explain. Later came the so-called dark flow, a drift of galaxy clusters apparently streaming towards a direction far beyond the observable universe. And across multiple surveys, alignments and preferred axes keep appearing where none should exist in a homogeneous isotropic cosmos. 
The Quasar Dipole now joins this catalogue of anomalies. But unlike earlier flows, which could be debated as statistical flukes or artefacts of limited data, the Quasar signal rests on over a million independent objects. It is sharper, cleaner and harder to dismiss. This creates a stark contradiction. The CMB dipole and the quasar dipole cannot both be telling us our true motion through the universe. One points to Leo, the other towards the galactic centre. One implies a velocity four times larger than the other. So which one is correct? And what does it mean for the other? To answer that, we need to consider the possible explanations. Let's begin with a mainstream explanation. In the standard model of cosmology, the CMB dipole is non-negotiable. It's treated as the cleanest signal in the entire dataset, a direct Doppler effect that leaps out of the raw data maps, confirmed by multiple satellites. On that basis, it defines the cosmic rest frame. So when quasar dipoles point in a completely different direction, the mainstream view is simple. The quasar results must be wrong. It has to be some kind of systematic error in the catalogue, perhaps an uncorrected bias in the data or a hidden selection effect. The difficulty is that the quasar dipole doesn't vanish under scrutiny. It persists across more than a million objects and remains even when the sample is divided into independent subsets. And here is the core problem. Quasars are real, resolvable sources. Their spectra are measured directly from Earth and already contain the imprint of our motion through the universe. The CMB, by contrast, is a diffuse radiation field whose dipole is only interpreted as motion through it. If both were truly measuring the same velocity, they would agree. Instead, the quasar dipole points almost exactly 90 degrees away, showing no trace of the CMB direction. That makes it impossible for both to represent our actual motion through the universe. A second possibility is to claim that both signals are misleading. Perhaps the CMB dipole is contaminated by foregrounds, and the quasar dipole is distorted by survey effects. Yet, this is even harder to defend. The CMB dipole is a first order feature that requires almost no processing. It dominates the maps, it has been confirmed independently by Kobe, WMAP, and Planck. To argue that both are artefacts stretches credibility. The final possibility is more troubling, that the quasars themselves are not isotropic, that one side of the universe is generally different from the other. Yet this would mean abandoning the cosmological principle, the assumption of homogeneity and isotropy that underpins the entire Big Bang model. And since the dipole axis points almost directly at the galactic centre, it would make our own vantage point look suspiciously special. For mainstream cosmology then, the only defensible position is that the quasar results are an illusion. Because if it isn't, the foundations of the cosmic rest frame, and with it the coherence of the entire Lambda CDM framework collapses. Outside the standard model, there are other ways to interpret what we see. Each comes from a different cosmology with its own explanation for redshift and the CMB. None of them are simple, and each has problems of its own. However, they all share one point in common. They treat the quasar dipole as a real signal that needs to be explained, not dismissed. Let's look at three of the main possibilities, tired light, plasma cosmology, and intrinsic redshift. In tired light models, redshift is not caused by cosmic expansion, but by photons gradually losing energy as they travel. The idea that this process could also explain a diffuse background of microwave radiation goes back to the late 19th century. In 1896, Charles Guillaume calculated that the combined light of stars in an infinite static universe would produce a background temperature of about 6 Kelvin. Arthur Eddington refined this estimate in 1926, predicting a value closer to 3 Kelvin. Later, Erwin Freundlich explicitly connected this background to a tire light mechanism, suggesting that photons' energy loss over distance could both account for redshift and generate the microwave field, without needing a hot Big Bang. From this perspective, the CMB dipole could be interpreted as our real motion through that field. The quasar dipole, however, would not mark a velocity, but a structural difference. Perhaps we are simply closer to the filament network on one side of the sky than on the other. That would mean quasars in the direction appear systematically less redshifted while those in the opposite direction, being slightly further away in optical depth, appearing more redshifted. 
The problem is twofold. First, it's hard to see why this difference would divide the sky along such a clean axis. And second, if the C and B dipole really is our motion, then that same motion should be visible in the quasar spectra as well. Yet the study shows it's not. Plasma cosmology treats the C and B not as a primordial relic, but as a local radiation field generated by plasma processes. This opens two possibilities. One is that the dipole really is our motion through this field. In that case, the quasar dipole would have to be explained by structural differences between cosmic filaments, much like the tired light idea. But this runs into the same contradiction seen before. The quasar dipole shows no trace of the CMB motion. The other possibility is cleaner. The CMB dipole may not be motion at all, but simply an intrinsic anisotropy in the local radiation field. In this scenario, the quasar dipole would then be explained in terms of distance differences across filament networks. This avoids the motion problem, though it leaves us with no clear physical reason for the anisotropy of the CMB field itself. A third option comes from Halton Arp, who argued that quasars can carry intrinsic redshift components relative to their age or evolutionary state. In this view, the CMB dipole could remain our true motion, while the quasar dipole would instead reflect systematic age differences, quasars in one half of the sky being younger than those in the other half. The same contradiction remains, the quasar axis shows no trace of the CMB motion. The contradiction between the CMB and the quasar dipole is not a minor puzzle, it's a fundamental crisis. Inside the standard model, the only way out is to dismiss the quasar results as an illusion. But if the quasar data is real, then the cosmic rest frame defined by the CMB no longer means what cosmologists think it does. It's tempting to imagine that both dipoles could be motion, one relative to matter, the other relative to a radiation field. But that idea quickly collapses. If the CMB dipole were a true velocity, its imprint would also appear in quasar spectra. It doesn't. The cleanest reading is that the CMB dipole is not a velocity at all. It's something else, most likely an anisotropy in a radiation field we have treated as universal and kinematic. And that conclusion cuts deep. The CMB dipole is supposed to be pristine, the anchor for the Lambda CDM model. Yet, if it isn't motion, then the cosmic reference frame collapses, and with it the foundation on which galaxy surveys and large-scale maps have been built. For decades, those surveys have been corrected in the CMB rest frame. If that frame is wrong, the corrections are wrong, and our picture of the large-scale universe may have already been skewed at its foundation. Two compasses, two directions, the real question is not how fast we're moving, but what the CMB actually is. And there's one more detail that's hard to ignore. The two dipoles don't just disagree, they're almost exactly 90 degrees apart. Not perfectly, but close enough that measurement error could account for the difference. And that angle is intriguing. In electromagnetism, electric and magnetic fields are orthogonal, locked at right angles to each other and to the direction of wave propagation. Plasma physics, too, is full of cross-field motions that emerge from similar geometry. Could it be coincidence? Possibly. But if the quasar dipole tracks the flow of matter and the CMB dipole reflects something else, perhaps a radiation field or plasma structure, then their near orthogonality may not be random at all. It might be a clue that these are two sides of a deeper relation we don't yet understand.